Welcome back everyone, and in my spare bedroom, for the second time, we're going to be setting up the Mikolo, but this time, the M4. Let's get started. All right, just like my previous video where I set up the Mikolo, or Mikolo, I'm not really sure how to say it, the Power Rack version, um, it comes in separate boxes. So this one, we've got four different boxes. All right, now I have everything where I need it. This is box number one, box number two box number three, and box number four, along with what was also in box number four, which is all of our bolts, all of our washers, all that fun stuff, and the instructions. So first things first, we're gonna get everything in our assembly step one all together. And as you can see, I got all the hardware together first. So you're gonna need 10 of the G2s, you're gonna need four of the locking nuts, and you're also gonna need four of the washers. Now, the washers are the ones that you have to look out for. You can see that there's two different sizes. There's a 12 and a 10. So one is bigger than the other. Um, you pretty much have a ridiculous amount of the, the 10s and very few of the larger ones. So we're gonna be grabbing these smaller ones for this step. All right, next step down, I went and found a two, which is this piece, a one, which is the top one, and a three. So the difference between a two and a three, your left and right side, you can see over here, we've got two holes. And then over here, this one has some extra attachments up here. Also, do not get a one and a 10 Confused, they look very similar, but this one only has two holes where the other one has four. And also when you're grabbing these F pieces, remember there's a few different F pieces. There is the F4 and the F5. The F5 is going to be the larger of the two. So that's F5, F4. F3 is the one that's got the little U shape on it like that and then you only have one of these long ones, that's F2. So you have to find that in another package over here. And over here on the right hand side, in the instructions, it also says grab B8 to put that on there and all the equipment. Um, after looking at the final product, that is the extra weight storage. And based on my room, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Hi, Bubby. So I'm going to skip that step, but if you do wanna do that, it's pretty much the same. You don't, you can't eat the nuts. So if you do want to grab B8, you'll put it on there and you'll attach everything the way it shows here, just like I'll show you with the rest of the build. So the first place we're gonna start, I'm gonna start over here in the lower left-hand corner, as you can see. I've already put the bolts through here. So those little square pieces will go in. It's gonna look like this. We're gonna lift this up and then slide both of these holes through here so they're coming straight through. All right, so it's gonna look like that after you're done. The bolts are sticking through here. We've got the bolt and then the plate going all the way through, so that's secured on there. Now we're gonna move on to the top corner. All right, so this one is gonna be the same for the left and for the right-hand side. I've already got the stuff over there. All right, bolts are gonna go through here. They're gonna pass all the way through onto this side. You'll have, let me line that up. Both of those are lined up. So you're gonna have two holes extra on the top. So that's where these are gonna be placed. Then you're gonna put the washer and then the nut. So the left side looks like that. Haven't tightened anything down completely yet. And then this side, I had to put them in the other way. Um, so the square holes are gonna go through this piece to keep this locked in place since I, I'm not putting the other one in. It's like as soon as I talk, you have to come running, don't you? So the last thing I gotta do is I gotta put this one on. So I'll, the same thing as the bottom left-hand corner. I'm gonna feed these through and then through the bottom so they're both sticking up. All right, so that is step one complete. The only thing left to do is to tighten up the bolts here and the bolts here. The other stuff, obviously there's nothing to tighten up. We're just gonna leave that until one of the next steps. And just like the last video, I do suggest getting an actual socket and ratcheting wrench, this is a 17 that I'm using for these. It makes it a lot easier than destroying your hands with these guys. All right, so for step number two, we're gonna need a few things. For these pieces right here, we're gonna need four of the F1s, they're little triangle pieces. 
And then for the two in the back, it's A7 and A8. And for the top ones over here, these are the really shiny ones. Those are our B2s. We're gonna also need the C1s. They're both the same. We're gonna need those on both sides. And of course, for the hardware, we're gonna need eight of the G2s. We're gonna need two of the G5s, 10 of the G9s, and 12 of the G10s. So the difference between A7 and A8, A8 is gonna be going on the right-hand side and A7 is on the left-hand side. If you lay them down like this, where both the angles are the same, this one right here is A8. The larger hole is going to be on it when it's this angle, and A7 is going to have the smaller ones. All right, so I have started with the B2, which is the shiny one. You'll have to put this through, and it's really hard to keep the bottom part intact, but as you can see, I've got it put together. The roller is on the top. The large holes are facing this way, and the side that has all the small holes is where, gonna, where these pins are gonna go into. So we'll slide this sleeve on first, put it over, make sure we get the bottom part, this piece of plastic in there, and then we will put the bolt through, and then the washer, the other washer, and the nut. All right, so the holes are aligned on this side. We're gonna put it through here. Take this out so it can drop through. And now this is the hard part because the bottom does not want to go through that plastic bit. So we're going to flip this upside down. Just to make it easier on ourselves, we're going to pop this out and push it through. The top will pop off. This is the easiest way I've found to do it. And once we have the top, it can slide back through. Oh, I did it the right way. We've got two tabs on both sides that need to go into the holes. So now that I have it pushed through on the top, we can maneuver it, pop it into place. And now this one is where it needs to be. Let's flip it back over. So it's like this. And then we'll go in between the two brackets. There we go just like that. And of course, same thing, we'll get the screw or the bolt. There it is. I'll lean it right here for now. Oh, I forgot to put the washer on the other side, but we'll put the washer and then the nut. Okay, so the next step is to start here on the A7 and the A8 over on the other side. It's going to be the exact same thing. So, like I said, A7 is going to go here on the left side. And you can see that it angles this way. And you have this uh, welded piece here. That's going to go like that. The angled piece is going to be down towards the ground. You're gonna get both of these guys. These are gonna be your F1s on either side. And a little point of reference, when you get this, this is A7. On the inside, it's gonna have the small holes, and on the outside, it's gonna have the larger holes. To start things off, I'm going to lay these down and then prop them up. You can see that these are the square holes, so we're gonna grab these bolts. We're going to put them through the bottom part and feed them through the hole to the other side onto these ones. Now that that one has been put through, we can get the other plate on this side and we can feed it through just like so. And then we will put a washer on both of those and a nut on both of those. We'll get this secured and then this long piece we'll put in between. Now that we have our plates in place to make it easier for us, we're going to leave these loose because these are going to need uh, adjustments once we get to the later pieces. So we'll get this A7 piece in place and then of course the A8 on the other side and then there's going to be the top. Lots of points of adjustment so we're going to keep these all loose for now. The middle hole and the upper hole on these, if we grab A7, you can see there is this welded piece in here. This middle piece is going to go in the middle hole. 
And then the first hole after that welded piece is going to go in the top hole. So we're going to align those two holes up in the middle and then feed the bolt hole through and we'll be done. Once you are finished, it's going to look just like this. That welded piece, this one goes through that and then this one goes through it. And if you look on the inside, that angle piece now sits flush on the bottom and this is going to be angled upwards. Now we do the exact same thing on this side with A8. All right, and once we're done, it's going to look a little something like this. Everything is a little bit loose because we do have those points of adjustment. Now we're moving on to step three. For step three, we are going to need C2, which is that battle rope attachment. And we are also going to need both B7s, which are our pulleys. So I've got all three of those out. And for the hardware, I've got it right up there. We're gonna need two of the G3s, four of the G9s, and six of the G10s. C2 is pretty easy. We're just gonna grab this, set it on top, put a washer and a nut on there, washer and a nut on there, and we're done. So the pulley is pretty simple. We'll get the pulley and put it in between the bracket right in here. Then we're gonna get the bolt and feed it through. Make sure we have the washer up here and we'll set that other washer right down here on the bottom and then put the nut there and then we can tighten this down. And once that is done on both sides and tightened up, so it's not super wobbly, you get a little bit of wobble in there. There we go, on both sides, then we are done. All right guys, we are on step four. This is the upper portion of what we currently have right up here. We're gonna complete the whole thing to make it an actual cage. So to do that, we need B1, which is this pull-up bar. We're gonna need this bar, which is A10. And then the two L pieces, which are these two side pieces, these ones are gonna be A6. So we're gonna have two of those. They're gonna be exactly the same. And then of course we need our hardware, which I have right here. We have eight pieces of G2, two of G5, and then your 10 nuts and 12 washers. Also hidden in here, it's kind of hard to see, but we need two of the F3s, and we also need two of the F4s. Those are our small ones, and our kind of medium-sized ones, but these are the bracketed. So we only have two of those, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is start with the A6, which is this 90 degree little split over here. This side, the end piece, is going to go inside that cap. And then you see right up there, we've got a hole that is gonna go in between there and we're going to feed our bolts through that side. So let's slip this right on top of here and get that one adjusted. So that'll be right there. Little points of adjustment down here, but this one I just have leaning over here on the side. There's actually nothing holding this up since we just put one bolt down there. I just have it leaning against that pulley. So I need to grab this and pull it all the way over here. And it'll look just like that. As you can see, it's not perfect, but that slid into place and that is put just to where the bolt hole is. So I can slip the bolt and washers through there, get that secured. And then we can start over here with the bracket to make sure that whole thing is secured. And then to get the bolt through, we're gonna use the G5 bolt. Pass it through this side all the way through. Make it a little bit difficult, but once that's through, then we will put the nut on the other side and we will be done. All right, now we are going to get started on the bracketed piece to make sure that this side is nice and stable. So you can see over here, we've got these two holes. You've got one there and one there. We're gonna take this bracketed piece, fit it over here so it lines up with the top and bottom hole. We're gonna grab our bolts, stick them through there, and of course, washer and nut off the end. When we place it through A10, so A10 is gonna fit right on there, and then the washer and the nut's gonna go through that, and that will complete the whole thing. Woo! All right, so that is in place. Again, nothing has been tightened up. There is still a lot of wiggle room that we need for the pull-up bar. Now we're gonna put this up, we're gonna line it up on the holes up here. They're gonna go on the front two holes. So these first two right there, we're gonna pop it up and we're also going to use our little brackets down there, our two F4s on the outside. 
So we're gonna put the brackets out here and then put the bolt through into the pull-up bar and then of course, washer nut. So I'm not sure if I said it or not, but I did grab the wrong ones. I grabbed the smaller brackets instead of the large ones. The F4s, the ones that we're using for the pull-up bar are the large guys. So the tall ones, not the short ones. Now we have officially set up our cage and pull-up bar. Now we are allowed to go through and tighten up all the bolts that we've gone through so far and make this thing nice and sturdy. All right, now that all of our bolts have been nice and tightened, that is the end of step four. Now we are going to move into step five. So of course we need our hardware, which we're gonna have two G2s, six G8s, two nines and eight tens. Once we get that, we're also going to need to grab a few things. These are all of the extra pieces that go on the outside and the little hooks that go on a 10. All right, the hardware that we're gonna need for step five, we have our C10, those are our little hooks over here. We have our C3, which is kind of what we used before, but it's also got a little hook at the bottom. We're gonna use our last little F4 over here. This is the long one. And then of course we have the actual hardware that I've already said, the G2s, eights, nine, and 10. So first step is pretty easy. I'm gonna put in the hooks. They already come with the little nut on there in the washer. So we're gonna take that off, feed it through the top, and then tighten it in. All right, next up, we are going to do the little weight stands. So this is the D3, and the D2 is this piece that should already be inside and tightened up with that, um, that little Allen inside there. So this one's pretty simple. You just find the holes on here. We're gonna pop that through, and then we're going to get a a uh, washer, a nut, there we go. And these little guys in here, and we're gonna finger tighten that up. So once you put it in here, if it doesn't reach, then all you have to do is grab the provided Allen key, we'll loosen that up, and then this becomes loose on the inside. So we can put out as much as we want or as little as we want. So I'm gonna keep this loose. I'm gonna push it all the way through until it's nice and tight. Then I'll adjust the sleeve and tighten it up once I'm done. All right, and next up I am going to add, I'm not really sure what this is, some sort of attachment on the pull-up bar. Maybe if you wanna put a rope on there or um, a resistance band, something like that. So this is going to go on the bottom. So it's gonna be placed like that. This piece is going to be placed up top to provide support. And then of course the bolts go through, washer and nut. And once those are tightened up, the little J hooks are tightened up and whatever that hook thing is tightened up, that completes step five. And now we start on step six, which we do have a lot of stuff here in step six. So we'll make sure we get the pieces. We're gonna need 22 of the G2s, nines and tens, which I have sitting down there. We're also going to need the rest of our brackets you can see these ones, uh, they kind of look like a, a big old A. We're gonna need the rest of these. These are our F1s. There's gonna be two on the bottom, and then two on the top, and then again on this side, two on the bottom, and two on top. We're also going to need two of the A9s, which are these guys right here. They're both the same, so you don't have to get one mixed up left and right. And of course, these long pieces right here, we're gonna need both of those. The one on the left is a four, and the one on the right is a five. So because they're named differently, there are different ones. So the one on the right-hand side needs to go on the right-hand side. The one on the left-hand side needs to go on the left. And we will be using the rest of the F5s. I've got two here and two here. There's gonna be two on the left-hand side and two on the right-hand side when we start working with uh, attaching the A9s. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these two brackets side by side, just like I've done before. And I'm gonna put the bolt all the way through, washer and nut. Um, not tighten yet, because we still have to put this guy in. So I'm gonna place this on the inside and we'll put the bolt through just like that. The middle one, we're gonna leave blank. There'll eventually be a pulley in here, I do believe, but we haven't gotten to that step. All three of those in the triangle, of course, not tight because we need that to move around a bit. And we're just gonna leave that guy way up there. All right, and up top, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna flip this to the other side 
and our three holes again. So top, top, and bottom. We're gonna line it up like that. And it's same thing, just put the bolt through, washer and nut. And once you're done, it's gonna look like that. I'm gonna leave this whole thing loose. See how it moves around and it's wobbly. Um, this one, because it's gonna be used on our Smith machine side, I'm gonna take a level and put it on here and to make sure that it's perfectly level so when we actually use it, it's not gonna bind on anything. All right, so this one is a little bit tricky. So we are going to put this piece directly in the middle, as you can see. And on the inside, we've got the plate and then the bolt goes through, washer, nut. Same thing on this side, the plate, bolt, washer, and nut. But in order to get this into the middle to begin with, I had to take out this bolt so it would slide over a little bit so I could get this perfectly in the middle. Once you do get that in and put the bolt in, it's not gonna go anywhere. So now that I have all of this set up, I'm gonna tighten up all the bolts and we are done. And once you get everything nice and tightened up on both sides, that will be it for step six. Also something that we noticed, um, as much as we look over this, it looks like we only used 20 of each one of these. So they added two more in here. We couldn't figure out anywhere. The bottom ones, the top ones, we counted everything together. It goes to 20, so we had two leftovers. Moving on to step seven, we are going to put on these two pulleys. The two pulleys are the D4. And then for the hardware, this is what we're gonna need. We're gonna need two of the G2s. We're gonna need 20 of the G8s, two of the G9s, and 22 of the G10s. So that's all the stuff I have here. We're also going to need all of our E7s. So that is 20 of those. Those are gonna be our little pegs for our Smith machine uh, to hook onto. For installation of the E7s, these are really, really easy. We're just going to pop them through until they hit the other side. And then we're gonna put a washer on and a nut. And then we're just gonna screw it into the end and tighten it up. That's it. And pretty simple to put these pulleys on. So these pulleys are gonna go right inside here. That's where that middle hole comes into play for these brackets. And then we're gonna grab the bolt, put it through the other side, feed it through the pulley, and then out the other side, washer, nut. This may be a little difficult if you did not line up the middle like I did. So all you have to do is just loosen these, make sure it's adjusted to get the bolt through like so. And then once that is tightened up, the rest of them can be retightened. Moving on to step eight, we are going to put together both sides of the weight slider doohickeys. So we're gonna need all four of these, these are your B4s, so these long metallic ones. Don't get these mixed up with those thicker ones. So you're gonna have four of these that have a threaded end, but we'll see that when we put it together. Um, our hardware over here, we're gonna need four G6s, four G9s, and eight G10s. And then we're gonna need our little rubber stoppers at the bottom, those are four of our F10s. And then right back here, we're gonna need the two of the B6s. These are the things that hold our weights. To get this one started, we're gonna put these little bumpers right here on the bottom. We're gonna line those up with the holes. And then I'm gonna grab my weight piece and I'm gonna set it up like this so the pulley is facing upwards. And of course the weight stacks are facing out. And now I'm gonna grab both of these and set them inside here with the hole portion, which I'll show you up here. I put these in already. There's gonna be a hole on the top of these that this is going to be fed through. And once you maneuver those in place, you can see I've got them put all the way through. Just make sure that doesn't fall. Uh, you have to make sure it goes all the way through the bottom of this portion and then through the little bumpers into the bottom of the rack. You just have to make sure it's through everything. And then up here is what I was talking about, the holes. So let's rotate that one. All we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this up into here so the holes will line up. And we can put in our hardware, which I have down here. We're gonna do bolt, washer, and then it's gonna go through 
another washer and bolt. That's how it's gonna go. Once those are finished and bolted in, you can go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, once we are done with that, we're gonna move on to step nine. Step nine is a few of the accessory things around the rack that we're gonna put on. One of the ones is, if you remember, it's the one that I left off over here. All you have to do is put B9 or this guy right here on top of those uh, exposed bolts that were initially put in there and then a washer and a nut as it shows on there. Honestly, I don't know why they have that when they have all of these for weights on the side. That's uh, a ridiculous amount of weight storage. Plus I got this, so yeah. But I'm gonna start right here. As you can see up front, I'm gonna start on this one for the rows. All I need for that is B10, which is the foot pad that I have right here. And then I'm gonna need two washers and two nuts to secure it on top, easy enough. And then we move on to the landmine, which is a little bit tricky. So we're gonna need the piece itself, which is C5. And then we're gonna need some hardware, just, just for this bit, we're gonna need some hardware. And here's a little diagram. So you're gonna need some washers and some of the nuts. So I've got four washers on here. So one, one that's already on there, two more over here. You're gonna need two of the lock nuts on there. And then you're gonna need one of that kind and one of that kind, those are the G4 and the G5. G4 is a longer one, G5 is the shorter one of the two. And last but not least, you'll need C4, which is this fun looking guy here. Based on the instructions, it needs to look like this, and then it'll be placed in the landmine like so. So once it's put in like that, then we need to grab our G4 and put it all the way through. And once we've got that through, I haven't tightened it yet, but you can see we've got the little piece here, which a bolt can go through, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna place this right on here, and we're gonna put this bolt all the way through and then put the nut at the other end. So it looks like that. And now we have rotation in all these different directions. We just need to tighten that up. Moving on to step 10, we're going to put in the Smith Machine rails. So we're gonna grab these two. These are the B3s, these are really heavy ones. We've got these two right here. These are the two C8s. And we have these two, they are different. There's a C6 and a C7. We're gonna get the last four of these little rubber bumpers. These are F10. And then our hardware, we need two G5s and two G10s. And just a point of reference, once everything is put together, this is what it's gonna look like. So once we put this bar in, it's just gonna sit inside here. We're gonna put a bumper. We're gonna put one of these arms. Now remember, these arms are different. So this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be, this little bend is gonna to be towards the middle of the rack, and this is gonna be able to go into these. So that's how it's gonna look. Another bumper, the this guy, the C8 or whatever it was, the bar itself, and then all the way up at top, I've got the nut going through a washer and then tightened up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do on this side. Drop the bar in, make sure the threaded portion, you can see right here, is pointed up. The bottom part is completely flat. So the flat part's gonna go right in here, put it up. The easiest way I found is to drop that in there and then just start adding these things on top instead of trying to put all of it in at the same time. And now it is time to get the actual Smith bar attached. So of course, we're gonna need the Smith bar itself, which is B5. We're gonna need these two black pieces right here. These are the C9s. We're gonna need these end pieces, which are the D1s. We're also gonna need some hardware. We're gonna need the H1s, the G7s, H2s, and G10s. So this is where you'll finally use the big washers. So this is the M12, you've got two of those. And then we're gonna have four of the G9s. So the first thing I'm gonna do to make this uh, stable is I'm gonna put it on the top rung and hook it into place. So now I don't have to worry about holding this thing up or balancing it anywhere. So now that is set. As you guys can see, I also put the safety bar up here. So once you get this attached, it's it's not gonna be able to hit this because this side's already hooked in. So just so it's not putting weird 
weight on it. Um, I, I put this one up here, so all of this is being rested on. So we're gonna grab this guy, we're gonna move it up, and we're going to put this, we're gonna move it over, and we're just gonna put the bolts straight through, washer on both sides before you put the nut on, and that's exactly how it looks. So that gets it attached, and now I have to do the same thing on the other side. Great, now that both sides are completely done, you see that I've got this one nice and set in there. I haven't tightened anything up yet. I'm gonna get these end caps on before I do that. And these ones are as easy as just grabbing the end of it. There we go. Tossing it on there, making sure that this end is aligned. It kind of just seats in place once it's there. And then getting this big fat guy and of course the larger washer, we're gonna feed it through here and that's it. Once you give that a nice tighten, your Smith machine attachment is complete. All right, we are finally on the last step and that is putting the cable through. So let me get this untangled and I'll show you where it goes. So the cable routing for this is actually quite simple. So first thing you'll do is you'll take it out and you'll unravel it. I made sure I unravel it, make sure it was straight, it wasn't twirled up or kinked or any of that. And then you'll put one end, this one, which already comes with the little stopper. It comes with everything on here. You don't have to put this together. And then the other end will look like this. It's just a cut off blank piece. You get this end and feed it through here. So you can see this, it goes in between these and then up. And as it comes up, it will feed through that one and take a right. It will go through this pulley, come down around the bottom, back up over those two, back down to the bottom, underneath this pulley here, under this pulley here, and come up in here. I set mine in here and then got, just got the Allen and tightened those. It's tight about right here, which is nice, so it gives a little bit of give. And then once you actually get some weight on here, this wire will stretch out a little bit. It's easy as loosening these up, pulling it up further, and tightening it up just to get some better tension on this. But this is just the first step to get everything kind of in place. And now that I've done that side, I can do the other side. Okay, we are officially complete with the entire build. Everything that is um, still left are either attachments or extra pieces to put on. So let me go ahead and organize those and let's see what we got left. So this is all the stuff that we're left over with. Besides the accessories that I have hung up over here, this is all the stuff that we have. So we have these two, which are your dip bars. So you can grab these and hook them in up here. Something like that. I have them here. I have one on the inside, so if you want to do dips, you put them on both sides, and then you've got it hooked up to your bar here so you can do dips. The other thing that we have are kind of the most important ones, are these, I forgot what they're called, but same thing, these are gonna go in here, this is for your barbell, the one that I have over here. So you can do squats, you can do bench, you can do whatever you want, and this just holds the bar in place. And then you have these little peg things and these. These are, I guess, multi-use guys. So same thing, you can hook this up onto here. You can add pegs. Um, I believe you can also put these pegs at the very bottom here if you also want some resistance bands. Um, but I think what most people will use this for is this piece. So this is uh, for your legs. So if you're doing a, like a lat pull down, it locks your legs in place. So you just get this, squeeze these on like so, and then you've got a little bit on the outside here. That's where these caps come in. So you'll grab that cap and pop it on both sides. Whew, okay, so those are quite a bit harder than I thought they were gonna be. Um, but they're on there and I don't think they're ever coming off. So we'll get this, we'll get one of these pegs, we'll put the peg through here and attach this on with one of our pins we've got four pins over there for four of these little bars and we've got a little chain for something all right so just threw that thing on so if you have your bench or some sort of seat you'll sit down you'll put both your knees under here 
and you'll put the lap pole on here and then pull that down. So this just uh, kind of hooks on and you can see it's not exactly the tightest fit, but you do have this pin to keep it in place. So when you start lifting up on it, it locks onto this, which this locks onto this. So you can use that for a few different things, but I think that's the main thing that it will be used for. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That is the whole build.